Eccolo, hi. Tom. Ciao, Tom. Hola. Look, there is a room full of people here. Ready. Awesome. Hello, everybody. Ready, and you are on the big screen as well here. So Beautiful. everybody is able to listen to you and to see you. And even your your piece, if you're gonna, if you're willing to share your screen later, is gonna be visible. So, first of all, thank you very much for being here with us. Sure, I'm happy to do it. We appreciate that a lot. We know you are just out of your uh, daily streaming on Tasty Trade, so we are really eager to have a conversation with you, just like we did in the past, and to chat a little bit about the markets and about uh, how you're navigating these tough times uh, with volatility and stuff. Poi traduce, eh, non preoccuparti, perché non ci con la faccia strana. Of course, as usual, I, I, I need some moments to translate for people here and there, but for the rest I will leave you as free as possible to, uh, to like, go, go free, ok? Eh, niente, vabbè, gli ho dato semplicemente un benvenuto da parte di tutti e eh, gli ho solamente chiesto di eh, darci la sua visione sui mercati. L'obiettivo, come diceva Mirko, è molto applicativo perché la volta scorsa che abbiamo fatto l'intervento con lui solamente online per testi per IT Forum era stato un pochino più teorico e ci aveva spiegato eh, un po' più a livello teorico le sue, la filosofia testi trade che non so se conoscete, ma nel caso non la conosciate ci sono molti video sul nostro canale YouTube che la spiegano bene e ne raccontano i pilastri eh, e, e fanno capire qual è la loro filosofia che se la dovessi riassumere in 30 secondi vi direi che loro fondamentalmente sono dei grandi venditori di opzioni quindi loro sono molto schierati a livello nel, nel battito fra meglio vendere e meglio comprare sulle opzioni eh, sapete che è un, è un argomento complesso loro non hanno dubbi loro sono fortemente schierati sul lato della vendita e quotidianamente condividono sul loro canale Studi, backtest e ricerche fatte dal loro team di ricercatori che sono dei cervelloni di quelli tosti, eh, usciti dall'MIT e compagnia cantante esperti di statistica, che fanno vedere il risultato di appunto analisi effettuate sul passato sulle logiche di vendita delle opzioni, su come gestirle, su come rollarle, su qual è il money management giusto e hanno tutta una serie di logiche e di sistemi. La volta scorsa è stato più teorica, teorico oggi invece, eh, d'accordo con, con l'organizzazione di IT Forum, abbiamo deciso di essere un pochino più applicativi e quindi magari vedremo proprio dei trade in diretta, ok? Fatti proprio da Tom. Tom, I was just saying that last time we did this Converse, we had this conversation in this event last year. It was a bit more of a, uh, you know, of a theoretical conversation about uh, Tasty Trade, the Tasty Trade philosophy and uh, your logics and system. Today, the intention is to be a little more practical and maybe see together a few trades while having a conversation about your, uh, about the Tasty way, the Tasty road <laughs> of trading. Yes? I'm totally fine with that. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm ready for today. Great, 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 great. So um, let's start with the, like, I, I don't want to do market analysis, of course, because it's not our thing. We are more into logics and systems, but let's spend just the first five minutes about your view of the markets and how, you, how you're dealing with all this volatility overall. Well, I'm, I'm actually, I don't look at volatility as being negative. I look at volatility as being, um, very opportunistic. So yeah. I actually think that when there is a lot of stuff going on, whatever, however you want to define stuff, yeah. it's actually the, the, you know, that's the most interesting time for, for traders. You, we, we like what we call noise and noise can be defined by lots of different things. But for me, noise is just, you know, activity, not necessarily activity. You can make sense out of, but activity and anything that creates noise creates opportunity. So I'm, I'm looking at this market now as, as very opportunistic and I don't think of it in a negative sense at all, you know, yeah. not, not even for a second. Okay. Eh, gli ho chiesto appunto come, eh, ho detto, non è cosa nostra fare market analysis perché loro non guardano indicatori, non fanno, non, non lavorano sulla eh, lato previsionale e non guardano tanto neanche i grafici, loro guardano solamente volatilità implicita premio, logiche opzionistiche, molto molto razionale, molto scientifico. Eh, gli ho detto, non è 
appunto non siamo qui per fare market analysis, però spendiamo i primi cinque minuti giusto per eh, darci la tua view di mercato e di come sta andando in questo periodo di alta volatilità. E lui ha detto, guarda, per me la volatilità non è assolutamente una cosa negativa, perché io guardo alla volatilità come a una grande opportunità, la guardo in modo opportunistico. Eh, per noi trader, qualunque cosa, eh, per noi venditori di opzioni, qualunque tipo di noise eh, avvenga sul mercato, in qualunque modo tu voglia definire questo tipo di rumore, diciamo, per noi è semplicemente un'opportunità per vendere premio di alto, di alto valore e andare a trarre beneficio da questa maggiore volatilità. So basically, uh, in, in perfect tasty trade style, High volatility creates good opportunity to sell premium. Is it right? Of course. I mean, that, that's, that's high volatility creates a lot of liquidity. It creates a lot of different, brings a lot of different underlyings into play. And yeah, it creates, you know, in the end, great opportunity to sell premium. Yeah. Gli ho detto, quindi sostanzialmente nella perfetta logica testi trade, alta volatilità crea buone opportunità di vendere premio e lui dice sì, certo uh, l'alta volatilità porta liquidità un altro dei pilastri uh, di testi crea port, uh, porta mh, sul radar molti sottostanti che normalmente non traderesti invece in situazioni di alta volatilità in un environment di alta volatilità diventano uh, tradabili e crea nel complesso opportunità that's great um, so uh, How are you overall taking advantage of this whole situation? And what are the, uh, the, the, the most interesting, from your point of view, trades and uh, like um, opportunities that you, uh, that you took in this last uh, few, few months? Did you stuck with spies and a few stocks or no. there were uh, other underlines that took your attention? No, I, I'm... I'm indifferent. I've always been indifferent. I will remain indifferent to underlying. I don't really care. Um, I'm looking for things that I feel are, it, now this is very subjective, but I'm looking for things that I feel are, you know, potentially oversold, um, overbought, whatever, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. So lately, you know, I've been looking at opportunity in a bunch of these oversold um, tech stocks. Um, I've been looking at, uh, you know, some of the digital asset space. Um, we've been I've been trading, I've been very short the US dollar against um, multiple, you know, global currencies. Um, I am starting to get short some of the energy stocks. Um, I have been long Chinese stocks now for three months, you know, so it just depends. I'm, I'm really all over the place. Like the perfect manual, the perfect almanac of the contrarian trader. <laughs> like you have gone am, to the moon and you shorten. <laughs> I am the definition of the definition a of a contrarian trader. Yeah. Tech stocks going going to hell and you buy. Yeah. That's it. Perfect. Non so se avete capito, ma è, è divertente perché Tom è l'impersonificazione del trader di tipo contrarian. Ok, cioè. Uh, della persona che va sempre in fading del movimento di prezzo che detto in parole semplici vuol dire quando qualcosa sale molto la va a vendere quando qualcosa scende molto la va a comprare lui si, si, si autodefinisce la perfetta definizione del trader contrario infatti stava dicendo che ha comprato alcune tech stocks che sono andate secondo lui in territorio di oversold no? di, di uh, ipervenduto ha, ha shortato il dollaro americano che era salito tantissimo ha shortato delle aziende del settore energetico eh, ha comprato cosa ha detto? delle Chinese stocks delle, delle, dei titoli cinesi delle, delle azioni del mondo cinese che erano scese molto quindi in perfetta logica contraria che fa il paio col discorso del vendere premio in, in situazioni di alta volatilità that's great so basically what, have, what has been your go to strategy in this uh, in this whole like last five to six months anything or mainly short strangles or mainly naked puts and naked calls or what um i have a, i i've been i mean i usually always kind of lean on short strangles or variations of those but i've been trading you know i've done a bunch of pairs trades i've done a bunch of short puts in um in the currencies i have all short puts in in uh, bonds and notes i have on a bunch of um pairs trades um in in a lot of the tech stocks i've been leaning short strangles but they're very heavily weighted towards the put side of course yeah so that kind of stuff yeah 
uh, but mainly naked as usual. <laughs> um, I I prefer naked because it just it fits it fits my trading style better. That's all. Yeah. Gli ho chiesto qual è stata la sua strategia preferita, il suo, il suo veicolo preferito per tradare questi ultimi mesi e eh, già sapendo un po' la risposta in realtà perché li seguo quotidianamente e loro sono orientati 99% su short strangle e quando vogliono essere più non direzionali e ovviamente sell put e sell call quando invece vogliono essere più direzionali. E lui diceva appunto che eh, è, ha, ha usato prevalentemente questi veicoli per esempio sulle tech stocks anche short strangle però pesantemente sbilanciate sulla vendita di put piuttosto che sulla vendita di call e, e che il fatto di andare naked quindi non di creare spread a rischio definito come Iron Condor, credit spread eccetera ma di andare prevalentemente naked è la sua strategia preferita perché dice fits my trading style cioè eh, mh, eh, è adatto al mio tipo di alla mia personalità al mio stile di trading Me, preferisco le, le naked piuttosto che, le, eh, che i trend a rischio definito ok quindi sappiate che abbiamo a che fare con persone che tradano naked in modo pesante qualunque opinione voi abbiate del, del trading fatto sulle opzioni in modalità vendita pura um, That's great. So, what's on your what's on your screen right now? What's on your radar? What's the, what are you looking at now? Okay. So, I'm happy to take you through, you know, potentially to to see if we can do some yes. trading today. Okay? Great. We 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 Let's see. Looking forward to it. Ci condivido lo schermo e facciamo un po' di trading insieme. Ci vogliono i ragazzi, stiamo facendo trading con Tom Ci vogliono i coglioni per fare questa roba, eh. Right. Quello che, quando abbiamo fatto la, la diretta con Tom Preston lui ha fatto un botto di trade la sera eh, era la sera degli utili di Apple il giorno dopo li ha chiusi tutti ci ha mandato la mail dicendo oh grazie ragazzi mi avete portato fortuna tutti i trade ieri sera sono andati in profitto quindi sono, co sono così loro yeah so let's see how do I share screen on here I'm gonna do this gli ho dato um, okay. Okay. Uh, no, I want to do this. All right. Can that, does that show the whole screen? Yes, it does. Let me, let me spend 20 seconds over the Tastyworks platform because maybe not everybody is, uh, is aware of that. Um, non so, chi, purtroppo non, non conoscendovi non posso sapere quanti di voi conoscono quello che stiamo vedendo e quanti no, quindi faccio 20 secondi di introduzione. La piattaforma che vedete è la piattaforma di Tastyworks, che è come se fosse il braccio armato di Testi Trade, ok? Quando è nato Testi Trade era nata solo come una piattaforma di con, creazione di contenuti e di condivisione, una specie di TV online attiva H24 che diffonde formazione e ricerche sul mondo delle opzioni ma di quelle utili cioè strategie, approcci logiche di aggiustamento, roba molto succosa ok? Non teoria dopo qualche anno, come era ovvio che fosse anche un po' probabilmente per monetizzare il, il, il business, hanno creato il loro broker che si chiama Tastyworks, ma l'hanno creato in un modo straordinario perché è una piattaforma super all'avanguardia, è la più avanti di tutte nel mondo delle opzioni, più di Interactive Brokers e di qualunque altro broker vi venga in mente nel mondo del trading sui derivati e eh, hanno inglobato dentro la loro piattaforma le loro logiche, cioè se loro pro propugnano la filosofia per esempio del trade small trade often, che vuol dire fare tanti piccoli trade, tradare poco e spesso, come conseguenza di questa cosa hanno reso gratuita la chiusura del trade in opzioni. Quando chiudi un'opzione, tu vendi un'opzione, quando la vai a ricomprare, la, la chiusura non ti costa nulla, non ha commissioni. Perché? Perché non volevano che le persone vendevano, vendessero un'opzione e magari quando arrivava a valere poco, e quindi tu dovresti chiuderla perché ormai hai guadagnato tutto quello che può guadagnare e la logica ti imporrebbe di chiuderlo, non voleva che le persone si frenassero dicendo no, non la chiudo per risparmiare le commissioni e lì puntualmente poi prima o poi ti purga e arriva il momento in cui ti va contro, ok? Quindi hanno proprio inserito una serie di indicatori, di eh, metriche e di logiche all'interno della piattaforma che hanno creato. Questo secondo me è stato fantastico, cioè hanno adattato la tecnologia alla, al sistema invece di fare il contrario, ok? Thank you. Let's go. Ok. Can you see my screen right now? Yes, we can. Amazon. Okay. Yes, I just put Amazon up there. 
Um, so I I thought I would start with um, uh, just kind of like walking you through maybe a few like high volatility trades, potentially different trades that, I mean, are you, are you more interested in trades that that I might put on or trades that you could put on? Um, let me ask. There is a crowd, so let's ask. <laughs> let's make a... Dice, siete più interessati a trade che io potrei mettere su in questo momento o a trade che, come dire, voi potreste mettere? Well, it's a mix, but mainly trades that you would put on. Fine. That's the main answer. Yeah. Let, let, let's mess around with a couple of yeah. things and just have some fun. Yes. So, so for starters, um, like I'm looking for certain stocks that I feel like are kind of on their butts. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, the reason I'm saying that is because right now the S&Ps are down. You see right where my cursor is? Yeah. The S and P's are down 20 handles this morning. Handles. Yeah. And um, uh, Nasdaq's down 117. Yeah. So some of these stocks have been beaten up. I pulled up Amazon because that's one stock that's that I feel has really been beaten up. I'll just put it on the chart here so you can see it. Yeah. So, so this is Amazon, you know, and and it's just it's trading just off its bottom that it made when it had earnings recently. So yeah. the stock is on its butt. And the, some of the things I like here is the high IV rank of 40, the really good volume over here, obviously of 30 million shares already. And, um, you know, of course there's tons of liquidity in here and the high implied volatility. So, I mean, there's a couple of things we can do in Amazon and and I, I'd like to lean a little bit long Amazon, all right? Because I'm not that interested in getting shorted here, but I think we have to be objective about it. So I think we'll look at a couple of different Amazon trades. Yeah. And yeah. We'll, I'm going to show you multiple Amazon trades, okay? Good. Potential. Great. Um, I'm going to start in each case with um, a 16 delta option just to keep it clean, okay? Yeah. So the first one, you can see over here, the 16 delta option is the 78 puts. Yeah. You see that right here? And on the call side, the 16 delta option is the, um, I'll go down here, uh, right to the 108. I'm just going to the perfect, you know, 16 Delta. Yeah. So we'll go to the 108.25. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't really matter what the strike is. Um, and that pulls in a, a credit of um, $2.67. All right. Now, just for argument's sake here, I'm going to route that order. I'm going to put it up over here. You can see it. It's working. These are all real trades, by the way. Okay. I don't do anything. I don't do anything but real trades. Anything demo. Um, <laughs> yes. So... So that's a real trade. Now, it's not filled yet. Now I'm going to yeah. create a similar order, okay? And on this order, I'm going to um, do it a little bit different in the sense that I'm going to make this one into an iron condor, all right? Okay, so, so like the, the, the defined risk version, basically. That's right. So 108 and 25, and I'm going to take it up to 113.25. Okay, that's $5 wide, right? $5 wide, yeah. Okay, and on the put side, I'm going to go from 78 to 73. Okay. Five dollars wide. All yeah. right. And I'm just going to route the iron condor. I'm not filled on either of these. Yeah. So, and I'm doing I'm doing that on purpose so you, so you can see these all set up side by side by side. So here's a strangle yeah. with the 16 delta strikes. Here's an iron condor with the um, same 16 delta strikes, but five dollars wide. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to go back to my first trade, hit similar order. And this time I'm going to start with the same strikes, but this time I'm going to do a Jade Lizard. I'm only going to sell the put. All right. Yeah. And up here on the call, I'm going to sell the call spread five dollars wide. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah. The Okay. Now mm -hmm. I'm just going to route, route this. Now, the reason I'm putting all these three here and I'm purposely not trying to get filled yet. Yeah, it's because I want you to see that using the same setup methodology, I did a strangle, an iron condor, and a um, a strangle, an iron condor, and a jade lizard. And then a jade lizard. Yeah, this is a neutral trade, a neutral trade, and a slightly bullish, bullish trade. Okay, lateral. Now, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bullish in here, of course, in Amazon to start with. So. 
The only adjustment that I'm going to make to this trade is I'm going to go back to my first one, the strangle, just because. And what I'm going to do here is in, I'm going to leave the call strike the same, but the put strike, I'm just going to modify this. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to move the put strike up a little bit. So instead of 78, okay, I'm going to okay. move it up. I'm going to make it a little bit uneven. All right. So let me just do this. I'm going to cancel this. So order. to tilt it a little bit to the long side, basically, to the bullish side, right? That's right. So okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go back to the 108 and a quarter puts, click mm -hmm. on the bid. I'm sorry, calls, click Call. on the bid. That's, yeah. that's, and I'm going to go back. I'm going to start at the 78s, but instead of doing the 78s, which are the 16 delta, I'm going to move this strike up a bit because I want to be a little bit long in here. So I'm going to mm -hmm. move it up to the, about the 20, let's call it 24, 25 delta. I'll yeah. move it up to the 83, uh, 83. Up, three, yeah. up five strikes. So now I have made this into a skewed, um, yeah. skewed, a skewed strangle. Yeah. Right. So now here's my three orders. They're all in at the mid price. All right. I'm going to have to move them because the stock's rallying up a little bit here as we talk. So first with the iron condor, the mid price, the mid price is let's call it, you know, it's hard to see because I have this crazy thing here. The mid price um, is around on. 109. Yeah. You can see right down here. I put in a yeah. 111. The mid price is 109. Yeah. We're going to start at 109. Nothing done. And we'll lower it a penny off the mid price. Yes. Now, the reason that the mid price came down a little bit is because the market rallied. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it in at 108 I, I, and I got filled. Okay. And a penny below filled. mid price. Filled. Yeah. Now I'm going to go to the next one, which is the Jade Lizard. This is a little bit more of a bullish play. I am going to look at this. Mid price is 196, right? So you lower that a little bit. Uh, I'm going to lower it to 195. Nothing done yet. I'll try maybe routing one more time. Take a fill. So I did it 195. Good. Both of that. Okay. Yeah. It took me routing it twice because it goes to different spread books. So I both the first two trades, I moved one penny off mid price. That's a very liquid underlying. Now yeah. we have this huge strangle. Mid price, I wrote in here at 365, but actually, as you can see here, mid price is actually about 360. Yeah. So I'm going to route it at 360. Nothing done. I'll try one more time just to see if it works in a different spread book. It didn't. I'll go down to 359 and I'm filled. So all three orders, okay, all three orders, I moved them one penny off mid price. That's what I want to show you. It's a very liquid underlying. Yeah. I did um, five contracts of each one, right? Mm -hmm. So I did, um, we just traded um, five strangles. Five iron condors and five jade lizards, right? Yes. <laughs> I did all three, one penny off mid price. And I gave myself a very small bullish position in Amazon. Okay. That's yes. starting, <laughs> that's starting to create a position. Now I'm still excited about doing stuff here today because you know there's different things that are interesting to me. And since the whole purpose of today is you want to build a position, right? We're going to yes. build a little bit of a position. So, <laughs> yes, but 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 please, I need to I need to, to, to I need a little translation session, Tom. <laughs> Sorry to stop you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I love your energy, but I need a little explanation here. <laughs> People is like here, <laughs> like this. Sorry, just give me a minute. Uh, okay, si riesci a seguire più o meno? Sì. Vabbè, no, eh. Vabbè, non la spiegazione, immagino, se non parlate inglese, però l'attività la, 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 è relativamente, eh, insomma, chiara. In pratica ha sparato una cifra di trade su Amazon. La, pre la premessa è, vi faccio vedere come io inizio a creare una posizione. La premessa è, la creo su Amazon per una serie di motivi. Uno, perché ha ottima liquidità e alta volatilità implicita e poi perché mi ha fatto vedere sul grafico all'inizio un grafico normale con la candele è un titolo che secondo me è in territorio di ipervenduto perché è stato mh, bastonato di brutto dice il Nasdaq è sceso molto l'S&P oggi sta scendendo un pochino quindi secondo me siamo in un territorio di ipercomprato per alcuni titoli su cui può essere interessante creare una posizione di vendita di premio e vagamente rialzista come inclinazione e quindi ha cominciato a mettere in piedi dei trade di tipologia diversa, ma con logica simile. E ne ha messi in piedi tre. 
La prima è stata una short strangle classica, dove ha venduto call e ha venduto put, è partito bilanciato vendendo il delta 16 su entrambi i fronti, sia call che put, e poi avete visto a un certo punto ha modificato, gli ha dato un tilt rialzista alzando lo strike della put, era partito con 78, 108 e 25 e poi a un certo punto ha alzato lo strike della put e è andato all'83 in modo che il delta di quelle put non fossero equilibrati ma fosse più forte quello della put perché il suo eh? esatto per dargli un tilt laterale rialzista ok perché la sua, il suo essendo lui un trader contrario essendo, essendo sceso molto la sua intenzione era diventare leggermente rialzista e quello è stato uno poi il secondo che ha messo in piedi è stato simile ma la versione a rischio definito cioè un iron condor se vendo due call e due put, una call e una put e compro una call da una parte e una put dall'altra più out of the money creo il payoff di un iron condor che è la versione a rischio definito di una short strangle che So, so per certo che a lui non fa impazzire perché lui è un nakedista di quelli, eh, di quelli tosti, però per farci vedere come funziona a noi ci ha, ci ha fatto anche la versione Iron Condor. E anche quella è rimasta abbastanza neutrale invece come, come tipo di impostazione. E poi ha fatto quella che loro chiamano Jade Lizard, che è una costruzione leggermente diversa dove la put rimane nuda, quindi sell put, mentre sul lato call costruiscono uno spread di call, un credit spread di call, che si chiama bear call spread. Quindi sell put, naked, più call venduta e, put, e call comprata. Ok? Questo crea un payoff che adesso vi volevo far vedere, la, la, la cui forma vi volevo far vedere proprio sul... Um, sull'applicativo di Testiworks che disegna i payoff, però per farvi capire è fatta così, 1, 2, 3, 4, ok? Per, se avete dimestichezza con i payoff opzionistici, che quindi è una strategia anche lì, vendita di premio, decadimento temporale a favore, ma inclinazione laterale rialzista, perché sul lato nord non ha rischio, essendo le call in spread invece che naked, capito? Quindi se sale, siamo tranquilli perché siamo coperti, d'accordo? E vi ho fatto vedere che la negoziazione è stata particolarmente facile, perché essendo un sottostante liquido è bastato abbassare il prezzo di qualche penny, andare a prendere il mid price o a volte un penny sotto al mid price e l'ha eseguito subito. Indice di grande liquidità da parte del titolo. È chiaro? Questo è quello che ha fatto. Comunque, 15 contratti, 15 show 5 show strangle, 5 Iron Condor e 5 Jade Lizard. C'era la scadenza? Che... Ha preso, credo, gennaio, 20 gennaio 23, perché il loro, il loro mantra sulla scadenza è 45 di tie, 45 giorni a scadenza. Siccome la più vicina è 52, credo che abbia preso la mensile di gennaio, quella del terzo venerdì. Loro, il loro mantra è la prima deviazione standard, quindi delta 16 per definizione, perché 16 più 16 fa 32 e quindi 68% di probabilità di profitto, teoricamente con la gaussiana perfetta, quindi loro vanno quasi sempre al delta 16 come punto di riferimento e poi si spostano leggermente a seconda dell'inclinazione che vogliono dare al trade. Thank you Tom, um, just a brief explanation of what you did <laughs> and what you said. Um, I really would love to show people the payoff drawing application of Tastyworks. So if you could, for example, show the Jade Lizard payoff that you just traded, it would be great because I think that one of the strength of Tastyworks is the payoff uh, diagram section. You want me to show it in the yes. sense... Um... Of, of, of seeing the payoff of the Jade Lizard, for, as an example, just the, the payoff diagram of a Jade okay. Lizard. Of the Jade okay. Lizard on Amazon you just traded. Okay, but um, I, I, okay. But I, I do want to get as many trades as I can get on in the, you know, in the amount yeah. of time that we okay. have. Um, so. Okay, just go, I... go to the next trade, go to, the, to your next trade. Just one second before before filling, just show quickly the payoff and that's it. Just a, just a minute. So what we can do is, mm -hmm. let me do this. Go to filled orders in Amazon and set up the... A similar uh, order and just quickly show the payoff. Yeah, so let's go... That's it. Yeah, I think what you, I mean, I don't know how easy this is going to be able to read on the screen, but basically this is a short put. Yeah. Um, it's a short put with an out of the money call spread. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has a, it has a payoff. It has a, it's a bullish position with a fairly clean payoff window 
in, in a big area above. It's yeah. it's like a it's like a um, we call this like a moderately hedged short put. Yeah, that's it. Just wanted to to show this screen to people to show them how the Tastyworks platform is able to quickly uh, draw the payoff of any strategy. That's it with the profit and loss diagram. Yeah. Um, let me go back here. I'm going to take this back to table. Perfect. Um, yeah, because I don't, I don't want to get too, con I don't want to get everybody too confused with everything that we're going to do. Because yeah, otherwise, yeah. we'll be here, you know, trying to. I think we can do, we can do a breakdown of analysis, and you know, have some theoretical discussions and and have some, you know, analytical discussions yeah. if you want to in the future. Yeah. But I think for today, yeah, we're probably better off just focusing on, you know, executions. I agree. Let's go on. Okay. Ha detto le chiacchiere un'altra volta. Oggi execution. Va bene. <laughs> <Agli ordini. laughs> yeah, let's go. So I thought we would mix it up a little bit and potentially um, look at something like maybe. Um, do you are you trading any futures options at all? Yes, we tr we trade many com commodities and okay. uh, and and of course index futures. Not so many uh, forex and like currency futures. So I would love to see a trade. Uh, okay. So the... let's let's take a look. So Future this sulle is valute, the... ragazzi, quello sull'euro dollaro. This is the euro. Mm -hmm. All right. And just to give everybody a quick view, the euro's had a nice rally up from yeah. here. You know, it's I would call this kind of like a very middle of the road. Um, kind of a, you know, I, I'm not a technician, so I don't really care about technical analysis, but. Um, I'd call this middle of the road. I don't yeah. have at these levels, I'm not bullish or bearish. Yeah. Um, I'm not bullish or bearish with respect to uh, you know, how with respect to any of my positions on on currencies right now, except okay. for the Japanese yen. The only one that the only one that I remain um extremely bullish on is the Japanese yen. Everything I, else? That's a good indication for me because I too have some bullish position on the Japanese yen that I've been beaten up recently. So I wanted yeah. your opinion. So you're bullish too. I'm bullish on Japanese yen. The rest of them- I'm, I'm happy pretty... about that. <laughs> okay. So high implied volatility rank, similar yeah. to Amazon. Okay. Um, plenty of volume in here, 157,000 contracts. Going out to January, uh, plenty of room. Uh, mm -hmm. 38 days to expiration. Yeah. Now, what's um, what what I like what I like to do in these cases? It's it's a little bit, you know, I, I like to start with very similar to what we did in Amazon. But the reason I want to do that is I think it's important to show people that there's no real difference between trading um, an index, an ETF, or an equity versus a futures option. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same, basically take the same approach and go to a 16 or 17 delta put and go to about a 17 delta call here. They're very similar in price. And the one yes. thing I want to show you about futures options, um, the mid price is 70, 70 ticks, right? Yeah. So 70 times $12 and 50 cents. So it's, it's basically about $900 in, in, but if you route the order, you won't be filled at mid-price. But if I move it one tick, so I go down to 69 ticks, I'll be mm -hmm. filled. Okay? Yeah. So I just sold one strangle. Now, if I go and create that same trade again, there's no difference. Here's the trade, just so you can see it. There's no difference in setting up another trade the same as you would do with an equity on this platform. That's what I love about Tasty. So if I want to go out and basically set buy the, let's call it the the two dollar wide. I'm selling a two dollar wide um, put spread, and then do I'm sorry, two dollar wide call spread, yeah. and then do the same thing here. The two dollar wide call spread. I'm sorry, two dollar wide put spread, two dollar wide call spread on both yeah. sides, and Got turn it. it into an iron condor. Instead of sixty nine ticks, I'm picking up. 42 ticks. 42. Again, this is mid price. Yeah. So I'll route it at mid price, but I won't be filled. But if I move it one tick off mid price, because there's no guessing game in commodity options. If I move it down to 41 ticks, 
I'll be filled. And so the nice thing about trading futures options is that you move it one tick off mid price and you're filled. So both of those were trades in the euro where I bought, um, I'm sorry, I sold a strangle at the 17 delta and then I sold an iron condor using the same strikes, but one's defined risk, one's undefined risk. Yeah. And on both in both trades, I moved one tick off mid price. That's the importance of liquidity. In Amazon, I did the same thing. I moved one tick off mid price to show you the importance of liquidity. Now the next trade, go ahead if you want to say something, everybody. Then I'll go to the next trade. Um, stava um, ci ha fatto vedere in diretta un trade sul future dell'euro dollaro. Conoscete? Uh, Sei e è il future dell'euro, ma che come uh, implicito al fatto che è contro il dollaro, ovviamente e ci voleva sostanzialmente far vedere come dal loro punto di vista per il loro tipo di approccio tradare un indice o un'azione oppure un feature sulla valuta di fatto non ha tutta questa differenza ha usato le stesse logiche, è andato allo stesso delta e ha impostato lo stesso tipo di operazione una naked e una a rischio definito prima show strangle e poi iron condor con lo stesso tipo di logica e anche qui dice l'importanza della liquidità ho impostato il trade al mid price poi sono sceso di un tick sotto e immediatamente sono stato fillato ed eseguito eh, no nel senso che lui siccome gli abbiamo chiesto di farci vedere cosa farebbe lui e lui trada praticamente solo naked eh, lui sta andando a ruota libera i margini però li potete visualizzare in qualunque momento nella parte bassa a destra dello schermo quando lui clicca l'ordine lì in basso a destra dopo ve lo faccio vedere con il mio mouse c'è subito istantaneamente il requisito di margine richiesto dalla piattaforma ovviamente per i trade naked Sapete che eh, è, è frutto di un calcolo del, del, del broker in base a volatilità, eccetera, eccetera. Invece, quando è a rischio definito, il margine è sempre il massimo rischio richiesto dal, dal, dallo spread. Sì. Cosa, cosa ha preso come delta per il buy? Ha preso, ah, per i buy, eh, il, il buy non lo fa in base al delta, lo fa in base alla distanza fra comprata e venduta che vuole tenere. Quindi qui ha tenuto una differenza di 20 pip, di, Però, due, di due punti, diciamo. E, e quindi è andato a prendere quello. Yes, here we go. Okay, so now um, I want to take you, I'm going to do two more underlines. Yes. Okay? And now I want to take you to one that is a little less liquid. So uh -huh. I'm going to go to Coinbase because in the digital Coinbase, asset space. Yes, the digital asset space. Coinbase has been in the news lately with all the other, you know, digital asset collapses all over the place. Yes. It's definitely front and center news wise. Um, you can see the volume is significantly less, mm -hmm. 6 million shares compared to Amazon, which was 40, you know, the, the uh, Euro, which is obviously massive, but the IV rank is still high in here at 43. The volume is lower. This is a stock that has a little bit less liquidity. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take you through the same process, but in this case, we'll, we'll, do things to adjust for the smaller amounts for the little bit less liquidity. Okay. And a couple okay. of different, potentially a couple of different trades. I'm going to go back um, and, and go to January again. And in the same sense that I did before, I'm going to go right back because I'm showing you how we stay very consistent with our methodology. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the closest to 16 Delta, which is the 30 puts. And on the call side, I'm going to go closest to 16 Delta here, which is probably the seven, um, probably the 70 calls. This is a little bit skewed, but the first thing I'm going to do is instead of five contracts, which I've done on everything else today, mm -hmm. I'll lower my contract size to three only because it's a little less liquid. Yeah. And I'll show you why. I'll enter this at mid price. Okay. Nothing done. I'll move this one a penny off mid price and I probably won't be filled. Okay. I'll move it another penny off mid price because this is again a lot less liquid and I'm filled. So this one required a, like giving up two cents instead of one cent. And sometimes yeah. this one's three cents. But I reduced my size because it's a little bit less liquid of an underlying. But now I know I can fill this up about two cents around mid price. But because this stock has been beaten up, here's you can see how it's been killed. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to say, okay. Well, let's do something else that, that we haven't done so far today, which is for starters, maybe let's just, in this case, I did a strangle, but maybe now let's just sell a put spread. So I'm going to look at which put spread I might want to sell. And I want to sell 
the 3035 for about a buck 37. That's the mid price. I won't be filled there. So I will move it two cents because I learned from the last year I need to give up two cents. Yeah. And oh, you know what? I have a position here already. Hold on. You have a, a position over there. Yeah. Already. Yeah. 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 No, let me. No do problem. Something. I understand the logic. Yep. Yep. Let me find something. Could, could you stop for a second just because I want to show people where to find margin requirements? In okay, that fine. Eh, fine. Eccolo qui, ragazzi. Quello dove vi stavo indicando prima <laughs> frenetically col mouse. Vedete qui che c'è scritto BPF, by Power Efficiency. Ok. Questo è il punto dove trovate la richiesta di margine da parte del broker per l'operazione. In questo caso sono 1.376 dollari di debit, vedete? Prima avete visto quando aveva tre, tre short strangle erano 3.000 qualcosa, poi è sceso a 2 e è diventato 2.000 qualcosa. Ok, comunque lì vi indicano i requisiti di margine della piattaforma. Ok, ed è molto eh, efficiente, estremamente istantanea nell'indicarvi tutto immediatamente. Qui vi segna il max profit e il max loss. Ovvio che se tradate naked il max loss non guardatelo nemmeno perché sono sempre numeri folli, ma è ovvio che se si fa trading con le naked lo si fa con una certa logica, non certo eh, permettendo di andare verso quella direzione. Comunque è andato su Coinbase, quindi ci spostiamo nel mondo cripto. Ha detto Coinbase è stata eh, pestata duramente e quindi io ovviamente vado a tradarla sia in modalità eh, non direzionale con delle short strangle perché la volatilità di è molto alta. All'inizio lui vedete che fa sempre riferimento a questo numero, ID rank. 43% di volatilità implicita, di rank di volatilità implicita, e poi la liquidità, che dice molto più bassa di Amazon, molto più bassa dell'euro-dollaro, quindi devo stare un pochino più attento. In base al fatto che è meno liquida, ha aperto meno posizioni. Ha fatto solamente due short strangle, due o tre short strangle, invece delle 5, 10, 15 che ha fatto prima su Amazon. Ok? In minore liquidità, maggiore attenzione. E fa, fa sì che la liquidità influenzi la size. Un ragionamento un po' strano, magari per noi, ma tipico del mondo testi. E adesso stava guardando una bull put spread, cioè uno spread rialzista di put, ok? Non gliel'ha fatto aprire perché ha altre posizioni dove gli ordini vanno in conflitto, ma quella è la logica. Yes? Ok, so, yeah, I mean, I should have gone through this before. So I, I set this up, I just widened the spread, made it the 35-25. Yeah. But you can see, your pop, mm -hmm. your probability of profit. Um, actually, let me just reduce the quantity here to one to make it easier to understand. So here's your pop. Yeah. This is the amount of ex the extrinsic. Well, extrinsic value. Yeah, this is your probably making 50% of max profit. Yeah. This is your Coinbase Delta. This is your SPY Delta. Yes. Max profit, max loss, and then buying power requirement. Now, yeah. I'll go back up to five contracts again. And mid price here is 229. I made it 10 cents wide. I'm going to reduce by two cents because we learned that's probably the mid price. Yeah. And then boom, I'm done. Immediately. Yeah. Immediately. Now, I'm going to go back. So, so I sold a strangle in Coinbase at the 16, close to 16 Delta. I just sold a put spread in Coinbase. Now I'm going to do one more trade, which is buy the 35 puts. In this case, I'm going to sell the 25 puts. I'm going to do a broken wing butterfly here. Okay. And then I'm going to buy the 15 puts. That would be a normal butterfly, right? 35, 25, um, 15. Yeah. But I... To, to make it unbalanced or broken wing, I'd move them down to the 10. Um, unfortunately, hold on, you know what? Because I'm just trying to find strikes where I don't have to deal with existing positions. So hold uh, on yeah. a second. Yeah, let me just see, because I forgot I had existing positions in here. Let's just see something. Um, if I buy the 45, I sell the 40. Sta prendendo una broken wing butterfly su Coinbase per farci vedere un'altra tipologia di, di operazione. Quindi una butterfly sbilanciata perché ha un'ala più profonda dell'altra. If I... Quanto? Quanto le porte adesso? No, la loro filosofia è la chiusura al 50% del profitto. Infatti hanno inventato una metrica, questo P50 che vedi scritto qui, che è a 87%, è il, il pop è la probabilità di profitto calcolata in, in modo classico la, pro, la classica probability of profit questa P50 è la probabilità di, chiud, di eh, portare a casa il 50% del massimo profitto ok? di chiudere al 50% quindi loro appena aprono una posizione mettono subito il take profit al 50% no con i loss hanno una logica diversa dove è molto, cambia molto a seconda se è un trade a rischio definito o a rischio indefinito quindi okay. hanno delle, delle metodologie di gestione ma è un po' lungo So to change yeah. things up a bit here, 
just mm-hmm. to show you how to do things a little bit differently. And I'm trying to avoid the current strikes I have. Yep. But I'm buying the 45 puts, selling the 40 puts, one by two, and then skipping down to the 25 puts, yeah. which which makes it a skip strike butterfly. It's kind of a wide one, but for a dollar seventy two credit, and you can see I'm working it over here. I only put it in really small, just so you can see two by four by two. Yeah, and if I lower the price, just by a penny or two, two pennies, two I'm pennies. probably going to be filled. Yes. Now I want to show you this for a really important reason, because I did a strangle, a short put spread, and a broken wing butterfly. In all three cases, I reduced the mid price by two cents because on my first trade, I did price discovery to determine that I had to give up about two cents off of theoretical to get filled in Coinbase. When I did the same trade in Amazon, it was only one penny. When I did the same trade in the euro, it was only one penny. Yeah. But in in Coinbase, because it's a little less liquid, it's two pennies, but it also has high volatility. It's, It's a more, you know, it's a very interesting play. Look at the volatility in Coinbase over here, 122%. percent Yeah. 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 So, Price discovery. That's something I'm gonna note note down for myself. Price discovery. That's interesting. Right. Never thought it so, would be this way. Just as a quick review, these are the trades that we've made in the last you know 15 minutes. Yeah. We made we made this is a broker wing butterfly in Coinbase, a short put spread in Coinbase, a short strangle in Coinbase, and Iron Condor in the Euro, a short strangle in the Euro. And then in Amazon, we did a um a short strangle. Strangle, Jade Lizard, a Jade a- Lizard, and an Iron Condor. Okay. So yes. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trades so far. Yes. And we've got we can do Love one it. more. Yes. I just Love I you wanted to build a portfolio today? Today we build a portfolio. <laughs> so more than happy to do it. Yeah. Okay. So lastly today, yeah. I think I think it'd be good to go to one of the indexes or ETFs. Yeah. Okay. Because it just gives people a little more peace of mind, that kind of thing. And if so, I know you being a contrarian, you're going to go to the queues because they are the most beaten up. No? We go to the queues. <laughs> I'm sorry. I put the wrong one. Q, Q, Q. I got okay. you. So we go to the queues. They're down 225 today. Um, and on a relative basis, sure, year to date, they're the most beaten up. I think they're kind of mid range right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but the purpose of this demo today was to show you that regardless of what we trade, whether it's Coinbase, whether it's the Euro, whether it's Amazon, everything works the same way. Yeah. That's the beautiful consistency. The one thing we have in the US market wise and technology wise is really clean, efficient markets. And yeah. it doesn't matter what you trade, everything trades the same way. One or two pennies off theoretical, based off Delta, all the Greeks are there. Everything is right in front of you for you to trade. So yeah. if I go if I go to the queues, it's the same logic here. Decent ID rank at 32, trades 19 million shares today. You saw yeah. Amazon even traded more than that. We yeah. open up January options. We can do anything we want to do. Okay, so you tell me, what do you want? Let's let, let, let's hear it from the crowd. Um, e, ha fatto un mini excursus molto molto bello sul fatto che alla fine è andato sul QQQ, cioè l'ETF del Nasdaq, per dire chiudiamo con una cosa legata agli indici che è quello che piace di più. E però era tutto per farvi vedere che alla fine qualunque cosa trada nello stesso modo. Abbiamo una bellissima efficienza sul mercato americano, soprattutto uh, adesso che è tutto... Eh, telematicizzato diciamo tutto digitale che crea una grande efficienza e una grande uniformità fra i prodotti che si tradono alla fine tutti allo stesso modo volatilità implicita logica delta greca eccetera eccetera quindi eh, era, era un po' un excursus generale un ragionamento filosofico sul, sui mercati finanziari e adesso è arrivato sul, sul QQQ e ci chiede cosa vogliamo fare dai eh, ha detto prendi una proposta dal pubblico su cosa ci sbilanciamo Avete qualche idea? È un'opportunità, eh? Dai, su. Io ho qualche idea, però preferirei venisse da voi. Cosa pensate su Nasdaq? Nasdaq. 
Ovvio che ha scelto quello perché è quello più bastonato. <ride> Vabbè, chi pensa che salga, alzi la mano. No, no, no io volevo una cosa più... Fa- più, più so, so. Tom, the, uh, people is not is not uh, is not taking a stance. So uh, I, I I'm gonna ask. Uh, we saw a lot of short premium trades. Let's look. Let's l- give us a, a hint uh, about something different. And when I say different, I mean either a debit spread done the tasty way, so if with like uh, probabilities on your side, etc., or a calendar kind of of trade. Calendarized kind of trade. On we'll do both. We'll do both. Okay, good. Okay, so we'll start off. We'll start off with two non, um, you know, like like you said, non premium, non short premium plays. Non-premium. These will both be. Yeah. These will both be long trades that do create positive decay. Yes. Okay. So, um, are you bullish or bearish in the queues? Of course, bullish because. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's that's all I needed to know. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is. We're going to go in, in generally, you can see right now that, yeah. that um, you know, here's where we're trading right around the 181 level. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to, uh, in this case, I'm going to go a couple of deltas out, out of the money because I, I like to go to right around the 35 delta. See mm-hmm. the 35 delta here? So we're going to yeah. do a long calendar spread. So I'm going to sell the 294s in Jan. January. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go to, I can go to Feb or March. I generally like to skip a month. Yeah. So I'm going to go over here to March. And I'm just going to buy the two. Uh, actually, in this case, we're going to have to go to 295 because they don't have single point strikes. Okay. In March. So I'm going to go back. Hold on. Let me just do this. I'm going to go back to Jan. I'm going to move this to 295. 295. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um. Oops, sorry about that. So let's see, 295 in March and in Jan. What the hell did I do here? I messed it up. Um, 295. Yeah. So this is a straight calendar. Selling Jan, 295 calls, buying March, 295 calls. This is a skip month calendar, right? So it's yeah. it's it's basically trading Jan to March, two months out. It's about the mid price is 604. It's probably going to trade around 606, but we're going to try 604. Well, they just lowered the mid price a little bit, so this might be good here. We'll go in at 604. Mm-hmm. Nothing done. I thought it might fill at 605 or 606. Hmm. One penny off mid price, 605. Yeah, great. Okay, that's yeah. a long calendar. Now, in in my world, we would generally, if I wanted to do, let's take another look at being bullish. Yeah. So. Um, if we wanted to do a call debit spread, just as mm-hmm. an example, we would generally go probably two to three strikes in the money mm-hmm. and and one to two strikes out of the money. So if yeah. I wanted to be long here, I'd buy the 276 calls. And let's just say for argument's sake, let me go, let me do this. 278, 284, let's say. They're going, they're going, they're 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 every two, you know, uh, two dollars wide. Yeah. When I look at a strike, when I look at a spread like this, mm-hmm. um, I'm buying a six dollar wide spread for about three dollars. But but currently, um, hang on one second. I want to. I got too many screens open here. They're they're blocking uh-huh. things. We're we're not quite. I I like to buy these where they're where we're um, not paying any extrinsic. And it, yeah. so if I look at, for example, if I look at the two seventy six, the two eighty two. Okay, and I pay three fifty for this. It's mm-hmm. six dollars wide. If I pay three fifty, if I add three fifty to two seventy six, I'm still not paying any extrinsic premium. Oh, right. Yeah. So when I buy a debit spread, I like to do it where I'm wrapped around the at the money strike, but I don't want to pay any extrinsic premium. So I'm still collecting money, yeah. as opposed as opposed to, um, you know, as opposed to paying money. Non so se avete visto, io gli ho chiesto di farci vedere, eh, visto che non arrivavano proposte da voi, gli ho detto io voglio vedere dei trade di tipo diverso rispetto a quello che ho fatto finora, perché finora hai fatto trade di vendita di premio puro, Shell Strangle, Iron Condor, eccetera, eccetera. Vorrei vedere i debit spread fatti alla Tasty Trade, che già conosco, ma volevo che li commentasse, 
e i, i trade calendarizzati che sono fra i più interessanti cioè quelli dove si vanno a vendere e comprare scadenze diverse ok e se avete visto vi ho detto questi sono due modi li facciamo entrambi questi sono due modi diversi di essere rialzista prima ha fatto la calendar andando a vendere la, la 295 di gennaio e ha schippato un mese cioè febbraio ed è andato a comprare la 295 di marzo la chiamata proprio skip mods calendar, cioè la calendar dove si salta un mese. In questo modo ha pagato sei punti circa di debito e ha un mese e mezzo per eventualmente rollare la venduta e quindi provare a gestire il trade nel caso che non andasse in profitto al primo giro. E poi invece ci ha fatto vedere come loro fanno i debit spread, che è questo che vedete a schermo ad ora. Questa è una pull call spread in the money, dove lo strike comprato è un pochino dentro al prezzo, mentre lo strike venduto è at the money, cioè praticamente dove il prezzo è adesso. Costruendolo in questo modo, in and out, praticamente diventa lo stesso teta positivo, non paga valore estrinseco, è un debit spread solo per finta, di fatto è teta positivo. Non so se avete abbastanza dimestichezza opzionistica per eh, afferrare questo concetto, ma è così. Ed è il modo in cui loro, siccome sono dei fanatici del non pagare valore estrinseco, ma incassare valore estrinseco, loro i debit spread li fanno così. Al contrario della maggior parte degli trader in opzioni che fa i debit spread out of the money e quindi sono teta negativi. Yes! So, I entered, so what I did was, I took a $6 wide debit spread, paid $3.50 for it, but it's still, it's, there's no extrinsic. So if I buy this debit yeah. spread, wherever I buy it for, it's still going to have positive decay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, that, that's so, what I, I told people now. Yeah. Right. So now the markets rallied up a couple of pennies here. So I'm going to just put it in it. Um, it's mm -hmm. probably going to trade around, around 350, but let me try 349. Yeah. 349. So I paid a penny off mid price. The key here is that we bought the debit spread, but we're still collecting positive decay. And in the counter spread, we bought a counter spread, but we still have positive decay. Yeah. Of course. And so what we did total was we made whatever that was 12, uh, let's see, three, five, eight, 10 trades. Yeah. Eight of them were, um, short premium two yes. of them were long but the long premium trades also collected positive decay that's it abbiamo fatto 10 trade di cui 8 in vendita di premio e 2 invece in acquisto di premio ma sempre col decadimento temporale positivo nonostante siano trade da debito questa è la parte interessante abbiamo costruito un piccolo portafoglio in meno di un'ora tom Uh, you know I would go on talking about trading with you forever. Unfortunately, since we are in a physical location, there are time limits due to the, you know, yeah, sure, sure, closing sure, sure. stuff. So unfortunately, we have to go on closing. Uh, but I really, really, really love uh, and appreciated this conversation with you and people as well. So please give us a final, uh, <laughs> a final speech and then sure. we... Sure. Um, I have to go too. I have to go too. So it works out perfect. But I, I wanted to do something different today where I gave you a chance to see us make live trades yeah. because I thought it was really important to see how easy it is to make lots of trades. And when you make more trades, you it actually becomes easier to establish. Like you think less about it. And sometimes when you think less and act more mechanical, it's just you're better off that way. And I think that's That was my purpose here today, just to show you that it's much more about the mechanics than it is about all the individual plays. And you definitely reached that goal. Ha detto il mio obiettivo oggi era farvi vedere come in realtà usando delle logiche solide si può costruire velocemente una serie di operazioni che hanno molto senso senza pensare a tutte le pippe mentali sul discorso sale, scende, eccetera, eccetera. Avere le logiche e agire invece che uh, riflettere sapendo che quelle logiche hanno dietro un certo tipo di ragionamento. Tom, we definitely achieved the goal of today, so thank you, thank you, thank you from the heart. People here is thanking you as well. Anytime. And we are really, Anytime. really happy about it. Yeah, we're okay. going to send you some pictures later. Thank awesome. you again. And see you next time. Beautiful. Take Have care, guys. Have a great week. Thank you. Ciao, Tom. Ciao. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao.